Goodbye, Odessa. Out of here, on the way to Kherson. It is 12 o'clock midday. It is 202 kilometers. It says it's gonna take me three hours and 15 minutes to get there, so I should be there in Kherson, all going to plan by quarter past three. So uh, that's it, I'm driving uh, a manual Picanto with one hand on the steering wheel and one hand on that, and no hand holding the gear stick. So I'm out of here. See you later, Odessa. It's been great. I will be back. I heartily recommend it. Beautiful, beautiful city. Talking nonsense once again. And uh, I better, oh, I need to turn right up here and change gear and not hit this bus. <laughs> Slava Ukraine! Slava Ukraine! Okay, so it looks like we're coming up to some sort of checkpoint. Um, we're only about 40 kilometers from Odessa. I am getting nervous um, because I don't know how far they're going to let a foreigner get towards Kherson. And I'm in a Moldovan registered vehicle as well anyway, so. Okay, this is a checkpoint, so I'm gonna stop recording. Okay, see you in a bit, bye-bye. I am cacking it. Okay, army and police checkpoint, so obviously they pulled me over, let everyone else through, but pulled me over because Moldovan plate and obviously Irish passport. But after that, that what they wanted to see was the last photos uh, in my phone and obviously this is filmed on a GoPro so everything I have filmed is on this GoPro but uh, the phone I gave them was the one which I'm using for my sat nav which is that one there which has bugger all pictures on it like nothing and uh, only once by mistake whereas obviously all the footage is on this GoPro so it was like default I gave them that and then I thought they're looking through it and there's so few I think I thought they were beginning to suspect that I might have a second camera which I do, I'm speaking to it now. Um, and if I had to delete all the footage on this, well, I absolutely 100% understand why, um, because they just cannot take any chances of um, video of positions, etc., getting into the, into the hands of, of the Russians. Um, as unlikely as that is, but you can't take a chance that they're at war. So they, they can't trust anybody and I, you and I and everyone, anyone watching this knows I'm just a, a normal knob, you know, I'm, I'm a nothing, I'm a nobody, but they can't take those chances. So yeah, that was a bit nerve wracking. And we're still, you know, 160 kilometers, 100 miles away from Kusam. So you can be pretty much guaranteed that it's not going to be the only stop I'm going to see. Totally different now coming out of Odessa because we are, driving along the south coast to Mikolaev and this is you know where, where I mean they, they had occupied Mikolaev and, and Kherson I'm talking a bit you know just a bit up in the air now ugh, ugh, ugh. you know it's always a bit intimidating when you're coming across kind of uh, police anyway but when you're in a country which is involved in an active war hundreds of people are dying right now right right now people are dying uh, to try and reclaim back their territory from an invading occupying force which has no reason and no place being here. <sighs> Slava Ukraini. Okay, so quick update. Um, we're pretty much halfway. Um, of 102 kilometers left to go, but still an hour and a half to do that. Um, yeah, I am quite nervous. And just after that last checkpoint, I don't know how much more. Uh, I, 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 there's no question in my mind. I mean, Kherson is literally, literally um, just the other side of the river. The, the river is the natural border between the two. And Kherson is still being hit by artillery and rockets and, and missiles on a, a, a nightly basis. So, so yeah, little, so I'm, I am, uh, I'll admit, I'm feeling quite a bit tense. Um, because you're seeing much more of a military operation and uh, police etc on the road and because you know I'm an hour and a half away from Kherson from Kherson me but that's it just a quick update and uh, we'll chat you on later on see you later okay so it's only a few minutes later and we are actually going through Mikhailov I'm still not stopping I'm just going to divert straight through 
Oh, a lot more uh, soldiers, um, military vehicles on the road. But we are literally 73 kilometers from the front, for want of a better term. Um, so just over an hour to go. So this is Mikolaev. Hello Mikolaev. Um, absolutely no doubt it's a beautiful place because it's right beside the water. I can see ahead of me a um, stretch of water and I can actually see it on the sun. So I've no doubt that Mikolaev is a beautiful place to visit and stop. But um, another time when you're finding out the rest of your country back. It's lovely. So we're about 20 minutes away according to Google Maps and uh, oh my nerves are shot, my stomach is in knots, um, yeah, it's still been um, more checkpoints, uh, remnants of, uh, of the wall like uh, blown out uh, petrol stations, um, the billboards, it's very weird, the, the billboards are just stripped, just old, just nothing, just ripped paper. You know, there's no commercial, there's no advertising um, on any of the billboards. There are no radio stations, none. Just search and search and search. And there's kind of one which is talk, and it's very, very faint, like the reception, and nothing else. Um, because, I mean, literally, we're 20 kilometers away from um, the Russian occupied part of, of Ukraine. So, um, yeah, it's just beginning to feel a little bit surreal and uh, I'm getting yeah nervous uh, I'm just getting nervous about just getting the hassle getting grief getting the footage taken off me the language is it's it is a problem um, even though that last time when they were asking me for the photos you know I gave him my phone and he was able to speak into the phone so I'm just gonna stick with that um, because not a single word I mean I don't even think the word thank you or please is, is shared or known so um, and I've never been in a country like you know that um, no bereft bereft uh, lacking in you know just a couple of words of, of the English language and I know that sounds arrogant absolutely you know but I guess you're just so used to it but you know everywhere from you know the Balkans to the Baltics to you know, to Africa, to you know, Asia. There's always, you know, you can just kind of pigeon your way through. Point, but this has been the last couple of days. Been, been nothing, absolutely nothing. So, anyway, um, 19 minutes to go. Keep fingers crossed. We'll get back to um, Kherson and uh, can get to my hotel handy enough, and uh, we'll take it from there. So, alrighty, Slava Ukraini. Oh my word! Now it's getting real. <laughs> We're 9K from my hotel, 4K from Kherson itself. So that was a big checkpoint. So again, obviously they pulled me over to the side and uh, checked everything, but um, really cool. Did not, he knew a few words of English, um, but uh, didn't understand why I was doing here. It just was, so he's asking me, do I have armor? Do I have helmet? And I said, no. And he was like, um, he was like genuinely concerned so I just kind of said, you know, um, I'm going to listen to people like you and people at the hotel and I'll only go wherever and if it's to. But uh, he was, he was, he was, confused, he was confused as to what the hell this gobshite Irishman was doing. I'm now literally, you know, eight kilometers from from the war zone, from the actual war. So, and so he's there, the army, and asking me, had just assumed, and he checked everything in the bags, and you know, but um, asking why I didn't have um, armor or at least a helmet. So, and was, yeah, was kind of shocked that I didn't. <laughs> beginning, to, <laughs> beginning to wonder what the hell I'm doing here now. Seemed like such a good idea at the time. Again, at the end, like he wished me the best of luck. He said, "Stay safe, wish the best of luck." And um, and uh, you know, he went like that, and I just said, "Slava Ukraini," and like you know, it was a good, you know, proper handshake. You know that kind of 
the, the grip handshake kind of a thing. So Slava Ukrainian, he said something back in, in so obviously this is a standard response. So I need to learn that. Cool. So this is coming into Kosam. Everything's just getting just a little bit weird. A little bit weird. Okay, so I'm gonna stop recording for a while because I really need to get my bearings. I'm gonna get my bearings anywhere. It's right now where I need to kind of work out where the hell I'm going. And um, you know, these are the cars behind and you know, they can see me. I don't wanna lift the camera up too high. Whew. All right, now I'm going. Okay, bye-bye. GPS is having an absolute heart attack here. GPS uh, can't take readings. So it's sending me everywhere here. It's so quiet. Turn left, then your destination will be on the left. I hope so. It is so quiet here. I'm um, hopefully there is a hotel. My hotel's down here. No, she's just sent me wrong again. In 150 meters, she doesn't turn right. Okay, it is becoming an absolute pain because she hasn't got a clue where I am. I'm gonna go left, even though she's saying go right, but she's just, there's no, there's no GPS. I'm, In 300 oh, meters, my God, now she's turn, turn left. left. 300 meters, turn left. So she's just making change, oh my word. Getting a little bit frustrated here. Oh, Turn left. Now left again and left back. What the fuck? In 300 meters. Turn left. Right, let's see. Turn left. Jesus. In 300 meters. Turn left. I have a chance of something. <sighs> Please let us be right. I just need to get my bearings. Turn left, then turn left. Does it look like there's a hotel down here? I might just check into anywhere. Turn left, then your destination will be on the left. Is it now? Oh, that's it. That's my hotel. What a view. Okay. I'm gonna try and get checked in and see what the crack is. Back in a second. This is, um, you can see it's the hotel and my view. Ooh, this is. I am. I'm feeling the tension, and I'm, for the first time, beginning to think. I made a big mistake here. Um. Like even part of me was thinking, "Fuck it." Even though the hotel's paid, jump back in the car. Back off back to Odessa. Go to Kiev. Odessa and Kiev, they're both safe. Go to Kish now, get back to Moldova. Whew. People are looking at me. The few people that are here, you gotta remember, so many people were evacuated from this city. Uh, there's a lot of people back home uh, in Ireland and England, well, around the world, who came from here, from Kherson. Um, you know, the Russians occupied when they invaded um, from March, so from March of last year, 22, and they occupied it right up until November of 2022, um, till the Ukrainians were able to kick them back out onto the other side of the river, which is that way. So we're gonna go walk down that direction. So it's so empty. I mean, this is normally a big city. I think this city is about 250 to 300,000 people. Um, but it's so empty, it's so dead. This is 25 past four, but even for the last few hours since I've been here, there's been nothing, but you're really feeling the tension. Um, so the few people that I hear just looking at me like, 
what the hell am I doing here? And I'm kind of getting the feeling that um, am, I, uh, uh, am I just doing this for a laugh? Like that they're undergoing like serious issues here. And I'm like disrespectful and I can kind of understand that. So they're kind of looking at me like, who, do I, who the hell do I think I am? So uh, yeah, so um, my presence here is, I'm just getting the feeling that I'm, I'm not really welcome here. I'm, I'm a distraction and um, you can most certainly feel the tension. So just carrying on a little bit as well. I mean, the hotel in Odessa, you felt like if anything happens, you know. Do you hear that? Holy f Okay. So I don't know what to do now. Do I go back to my hotel? I mean, there's no air raid siren, so people are just carrying on. I was about to say that I kind of got the impression that if there was um, an air raid siren, no one's going to be coming to my room to tell me where the shelter is. Holy shit. Um, what do I do? Wow, okay. Um, we'll keep walking down a little bit, see what the crack is. And there's just windows blown out everywhere. Oh, there, there's windows blown out everywhere. Okay, I'll, I'll carry on walking. There you go, that's the first sounds of uh, live fire, for want of a better term. Whether it was rockets, missiles, artillery. I don't know. I've never heard them before in anger, so... <sighs> that was mad. Okay. Slava Ukraini. Okay. They're going off a bit regular now. Oh, God, they're loud. Just missed two there. Um, kind of an army 4x4 four four came up beside me. I thought they were, like, screeched to a halt, and I thought they were going to get out and tell me to do something. And they stopped as I was on my phone. And then, um, then they went on. You have literally no idea when, where or when a missile or a shell or a rocket is going to land. Um, am I off my head? Oh my God. The streets are now completely deserted. The only things around I can see are these three dogs. So I'm kind of still walking to the river, if you can see that. And obviously that side is Russian occupied. So I guess he's just not used to gobshites. All right, there's another one. It's three to five. Um, I mean, there's a few things. There are a few things in. Um, I don't. I mean, listen. You can hear them, but what do I do? If I get hit, I get hit. I mean, it's like let's just. I mean, the chances are quite minimal. I mean, I'm. So there's two things on this side, the dam. I'm gonna try and see how far I can get to the dam. The dam that was blown up in June, which caused the whole entire city to flood and killed hundreds of thousands of livestock. Countless people lost their lives, causing billions and billions, billions in damages, purely because it was a way of um, the Russians trying to slow down the Ukrainian advance. Mim buses are still going and this woman is out walking her dog. So, um, I'm going to take it as read that 
you hear all the rockets and explosions that's just Wednesday so that's the crack well fair play to this guy or girl this place they're still banging away in the new black pub music still playing screw you Putin might pop in on the way back throw a few quid their way So right in front of me, I mean, I'm just walking in the middle of the road. And there's the Dnieper River, Dnieper River. And on the other side is Russians looking at me. And I'm standing in the middle of the fucking road. Okay, I've done some stupid shit. That's just a bit too stupid. So at least, at least try and get out of their eyesight. But uh, yeah, that's how close we are. So pretty much every building here has been abandoned. If it hasn't been blown in. Oh, gotta be careful. Oh, power cable. So worried about trying to avoid uh, missiles and get electrocuted. Are you trying to think of what was going through people's minds? Just out of nowhere, for no reason, your city, where you were born and raised, where your parents and grandparents were probably born and raised also, and out of nowhere, an absolute moron decides to invade your country and your city. It's even just the plants in the, in the windows. Curtains just hanging there, they're just left as is. They managed to escape. Maybe they didn't, I don't know, but just, just say that they managed to escape. There's just nothing to come back to. Like, I don't think anyone has walked down here. It's like 28 days later, that film. Oh God, getting nervous now. My stomach is turning because that's the river. And um, obviously there's all the barbed wire and barriers. So. Just more devastation. Skull and crossbones there. Danger mines. Okay, so, I mean, some people would say I'm stupid and they would be right, but you know, I'm not that stupid. Another boom in the background. It's not even just a case of my own welfare and safety is the fact that uh, Ukrainians have enough on their plate without dealing with a stupid gobshite Irishman um, getting injured or dying, you know, having to deal with sending me bits back to home again, even though I'm insured up the arse. But, uh, you know, they just, they have enough on their plate. So you can see down there, burnt out buses and um, that was a hotel with the water park outside. This is Kherson. 